Okay, so my name is Denis Damaji and I'm from IBN18. Today I'm going to present you about can blockchain revolutionize international trade? So let's get started. So let's start with the chapter one introduction. So a blockchain is a digital record of transaction or ledger that is decentralized or no single entity it controls to the network and distributed or records are all shared with participants and in which transactions are stored in highly secure verifiable and permanent way of using various cryptographic techniques. It is a continuously growing list of records which are combined in blocks that uh, are then uh, chained to the each other using cryptography, hence the term of blockchain. As transactions are shared, verified and validated on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, blockchain can operate without the need for a central authority or trusted intermediaries. And information once added to the blockchain is timestamp and cannot easily be modified. A blockchain therefore enables the creation of shared trusted ledger that all participants can access and check at any time, but no single party can control. Okay, so the next one is uh, blockchain is originally developed as the technology underpinning the digital currency Bitcoin and blockchain applications soon started to spread beyond cryptocurrencies. The transparent, secure, and immutable nature of blockchain has sparked the interest of private sector and government authorities alike. The number of proof of concept and pilot project is skyrocketing and application touch all sectors of the economy and society from finance to e-commerce, food safety, supply chain management, and even voting. With many such applications being permissioned, blockchain that require authorization to transact on the ledger. Billion of funding dollars are being poured into blockchain companies and blockchain related patents are on the rise. Okay, so continue to the chapter two, but the blockchain in a nutshell. So let's start with a brief history of blockchain. So blockchain is a technology that first appeared in 2008 within the cryptography expert community. It was conceptualized by as an by an S of yet uh, identified individual or group of individual under the alias of Satoshi Nakamoto and was first implemented in 2009 as a core component of the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. So while the Bitcoin blockchain and Bitcoin are historically linked, there are two different things. So blockchain is the technology underpinning Bitcoin. It is the virtual infrastructure that Bitcoin uses. And Bitcoin itself is a, crypto, is a cryptocurrency but the term is often used to refer uh, to both the cryptocurrency and the protocol underlying it. For example, blockchain. This confusion may be one of the reasons why it took so long for people to realize that blockchain can be used in areas other than the cryptocurrencies. To the launch of Bitcoin in the wake of 2008 financial crisis has caused it to be mistakenly considered as direct consequence of the latter. The historic cryptocurrencies, however, started before the 2008 financial crisis. Several older cryptocurrencies has failed to take off and never made it beyond the boundaries of the cryptocurrency community. So the ancestors of Bitcoin were developed by the member of the Cyberpunks, a network activist advocating for the widespread of the robust cryptography and privacy enhancing technologies as a route to social and political changes. The cyberpunks use peer-to-peer -peer system and cryptography to process secure transaction with a big brother element by which they mean a banking system. So the next one is the blockchain 101. So a blockchain is a digital record of transaction or a ledger that is decentralized or no single entity controls network. Although private blockchain have emerged the, that provide a, for a greater degree of centralization, distribution or records are shared with all participants and secured using a blend of proven cryptographic technology. So a blockchain is managed by a computer or servers that call nodes on a peer-to-peer -peer basis without the need for intermediaries who traditionally authenticate transactions, such as bank in the case of the financial transaction. So data added to the blockchain are shared with all participants in the network and area verified by and validated by anyone with the appropriate permission on the basis of consensus, pro consensus protocol of the blockchain. Data entered onto blockchain and are hashed, in example, converted into new digital string or of a fixed length using a mathematical function and encrypted to ensure data integrity, prevent forgery and guarantee that the measure was created and sent by the, and 
by the claim sender and was not altered in transit. If the sender of the data transaction does not wish other participants to in the network to see the context of the message itself, an example, the plain text data contained in the document submitted, he or she can choose to encrypt the message itself, thereby rendering the data unintelligible to individual without authorized access. Once validated, transactions are stored in blocks and are then chained to each other chronological order using cryptographic techniques. Data once added to the blockchain are timestamped and near impossible to modify. However, while blockchain can help prevent fraud on the ledger, the temporary resistance of technology cannot prevent false information from being fed into the ledger. Okay, so next we're moving to the type of a blockchain. So behind the simple and catchy term of blockchain, there are in real reality many different models that vary in terms of the degree decentralization and access, the identity of participants, the consensus mechanism, speed, level of privacy, energy consumption, fees, and scalability. So let's start with the first one. The first one is a public blockchain. So in a public platform, no specific entity or entities manage the platform transaction and public an individual user can maintain anonymity. No user is given this special privilege on any decision. As such, it's a completely trustless system in that it does not rely a trusted party to validate the transaction, but instead relies on the nodes to come consensus before any data or transaction record block and etc. are stored in the ledger. Public permissionless blockchain are the closest application of what blockchain technology was initially designed for by Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular are the most typically illustration of public permissionless blockchain. Some public blockchain, however, are permission, for example, in the case of proof of stake protocol, which Ethereum, the second biggest public blockchain, intends to uh, introduce in 2018. Only those meeting certain preconditions can validate transactions based on their stake in the blockchain, or in particular, how many coins he or she has and for how long. The next one is about the private blockchain. So in fully private blockchain, the permission to validate and uh, write data onto the blockchain are controlled by entity which is highly trusted by the other users and participants are identified. So in some situation, the entity may restrict the read permission to some users. Restricted uh, read permission provide greater level of privacy to the user, a feature not available in a public blockchain. So the entity in control has the power to change the rules of the private blockchain and may decline transaction based on established rules and uh, regulation. So in a private blockchain, verification of the transaction is carried out by a very restricted number of nodes according to the rules of the blockchain, which allows for greater efficiency and much faster processing transaction than public blockchain while requiring much less computing power. Transaction fees may apply for transaction validation as per the rules of the blockchain. So next one is the consortium blockchain. So a consortium blockchain is a type of private blockchain that operates under the leadership of a group rather than a single entity and in which participants are identified. It is a partially uh, decentralized platform. Instead of allowing anyone with internet connection to participate in the transaction verification process or letting a single entity having a full control, a few selected nodes are per predetermined. These nodes control the consensus process. They can read and or write the data and can decide who has access to the blockchain ledger. The right to read blockchain may be public or restricted to the participants. The next one is about the smart contracts. So smart contracts are computer programs that automatically enforce themselves or self-execute without the intervention of a third party when specific conditions are met based on the if then logic for example, if the goods are unloaded at port of X, then funds are transferred. They state obligation of each party to the contract as well as the benefit of penalties that may be due to the other parties, uh, different circumstances. So the concept of the smart contracts was introduced and further flashed by the cryptographer Nick Sabo in various publications during the period of 1994 to 1997 and was first introduced in the context of blockchain technology by Ethereum in 2015. So today, many blockchain offer smart contract capabilities. Smart contracts can exist outside blockchain, but they then retain the same potential problems as centralized database, an example, single point of failure and possibility to change the data easily. 
So the next one is the multiple application, but not a solution to everything. So while it presents interesting features, blockchain cannot, however, solve everything as current hype surrounding it tends to lead us to believe. Companies and institutions interested in the technology need to ponder the cost of benefit of using it and make sure that the technology is best suited to their needs. Building a blockchain platform is task that requires careful consideration by an by and coordination among potential participants in order to analyze the opportunities and limitation of blockchain in comparison to the other less ambitious alternative and agree on the key parameters. For instance, the nature of the blockchain and the validating rules and etc. Not to mention the technological uh, knowledge that the user of the system would need. A plethora of decision tree models have been published on the web to enable business and institution to make an informed decision on whether the blockchain is appropriate solution to their needs and if so what type of blockchain is the most relevant to their situation so that's all for my part and the next part will be continued by my friend shafitri thank you okay hi i'm shafitri i will continue our discussion about blockchain with the question can blockchain revolutionize international trade let's find out together Blockchain's potential trade-related applications are numerous and could significantly transform international trade. But the technology is not a solution to everything, from finance, including trade finance, to customs and certification processes, transportation and logistics, insurance, distributions, intellectual property, and government procurement. Possible applications of blockchain encompass a diverse set of areas related to WTO work. While technology opens interesting opportunities to enhance the efficiency of a number of processes and cut costs in these areas, it is not a panacea. Carefully weighing the cost and benefit is essential. Blockchain could open new opportunities to enhance the efficiency of processes in a number of areas related to WTO work. It could help trade move closer to becoming paperless. From trade finance to custom clearance, transportation and logistics, trade in goods involves multiple actors and remains paper intensive. Blockchain is seen by many as an interesting tool to improve the efficiency of trade processes and help move towards purple trade. However, the challenges to overcome are equivalent to the opportunities offered by the technology. Blockchain is seen as a possible game changer to digitalize and automate trade finance processes, in particular letters of credit and to ease supply chain finance. An array of banks working with financial technology, startups, and information technology companies are investigating the potential of technology. Pilot projects are encouraging, but a number of technical and regulatory issues need to be addressed before the technology can be used on a wide scale. The intrinsic characteristic of the technology also make it potentially interesting tool to help implement the WTO trade facilitation agreement and to facilitate business to government and government to government processes at the national level. Blockchain and smart contracts could help administer border procedures and national single windows a single point of entry through which trust stakeholders can submit documentation and other information to complete customs procedures in a more efficient, transparent, and secure manner and improve the accuracy of trade data. The real challenge will be to make a cross-border G2G processes more efficient. This will not only require settling interoperability in interoperability issues at the technical level, an issue on which the blockchain community is working actively, it will also require standardization and political will to create a regulatory framework that is conducive to paperless trade. Finally, 
The technology will only be able to work to its full potential if all aspects of cross-border trade transactions are digitalized, from trade finance to customs, transportation, and logistics, and if the semantics are aligned. The transportation and logistics sector, which constitutes a fertile ground for blockchain implementation due to the large number of actors involved, is actively looking into ways to leverage the technology in order to develop trade platforms that could connect all actors along the supply chain, including banks and customs authorities. If the projects that are under development succeed, Blockchain could well become the future of trade infrastructure and the biggest disruptor to the shipping industry and to international trade since the invention of the container. However, much remains to be done. Such projects require complex integration work and a conducive regulatory environment. They also raise issues of interoperability and standardization. A dialogue between all stakeholders, including regulators, is essential. Blockchain could, could also give rise to a new generation of services beyond blockchain's pilot projects related to threat finance. An increasing number of startups are developing products and blockchain applications to provide for quicker, easier, and cheaper cross-border payments putting pressure on well-established financial institutions to rethink the way they have been doing business. However, a complete overhaul of the financial landscape is unlikely. Ironically, the technology could serve to strengthen those financial institutions that Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous founder of or founders of blockchain, wanted to make superfluous. Another area that could be significantly impacted by the use of blockchain technology is insurance. The automation of processes through the use of smart contracts could help reduce administrative procedures and costs, handle claims, and administer multinational insurance contracts. Of particular interest for international trade are pilot projects being tested in the maritime insurance sector. Blockchain is also just starting to enter the e-commerce world. While the technology may not revolutionize e-commerce per se, it could give it a further boost and impact assisting business models. If the initiatives underway prove conclusive and technical and legal issues are solved, blockchain could become the future infrastructure of the services industry. Because of its automation capabilities, Thanks to the use of smart contracts, blockchain could be to the service sector what robots have been to manufacturing. A significant shakeup of relationship between a sector is, however, unlikely. Blockchain's main impact will most likely be felt in terms of cost reductions. Blockchain could help administer intellectual property rights in a more efficient and transparent way and help fight counterfeit. A rapidly growing ecosystem of companies is looking at how blockchain technology can be used to improve the administration and enforcement of IP rights across multiple jur jurisdictions. Blockchain applications in the IP field are numerous and could impact both the governance of IP rights and the IP industry itself. Blockchain for registered and unregistered rights could arguably be used to provide proof of creation, existence, ownership, and or first use to register IP rights to facilitate the administration and management of IP rights on a global scale, thereby potentially contributing to the emergence of global IP chains and to enforce IP rights and fight counterfeits in a more efficient way. While applications of blockchain technology could help to alleviate some of the challenges that right holders face, the technology will not solve all issues. But one thing is a thing, the disruptive nature of the technology, 
the multiplicity of potential applications emerging, and their practical and legal implications deserve the attention of regulators and legislators. Additionally, blockchain could enhance government procurement processes, but it is essential to weigh the costs and benefits carefully. It holds interesting promises to enhance government procurement processes, manage public contracts more efficiently, and fight fraud. But it remains to be seen whether current proofs of concepts are conclusive and whether the use of blockchain can bring e-government procurement systems to a more secure and automated level at a cost that justifies the transition to a blockchain-based SIM. Despite the numerous headlines on blockchain, the technology remains difficult to apprehend for many, and we should understand that blockchain is a world of opportunities and challenges. Beyond sectoral specific applications, blockchain opens multifaceted cross-cutting opportunities. Blockchain could help build trust and enhance the drug transparency of supply chains because it provides new ways to track the journey of products. Blockchain can be a powerful tool to promote transparency and traceability of supply chains, help fight counterfeits, and build customers' trust. Numerous start startups and well-established companies are developing blockchain applications to track the origin of products, prove their authenticity and quality, and assert ethical claims and fair trade practices. Following the various scandals that have been shaken the food industry in recent years, major food and retail companies are, tur are turning to blockchain, not only to enhance transparency of the food supply chain, but also to enable them to track tainted products quickly and help restore trust in food quality. However, establishing a credible link between offline and online events is essential, and it can be costly. Indeed, information added to the blockchain is only as good as the offline verification process that guarantees that the relevant requirements have been met offline. By increasing transparency and making it possible to automate processes and payments, Blockchain has the potential to reduce trade costs significantly, including verification, networking, processing, coordination, transportation and logistics, as well as financial intermediations and exchange rate costs. Although it is difficult to assess the extent to which the deployment of blockchain technology will affect trade costs, preliminary indications at hand tend to point a notable impact. Cost reduction estimates in the financial sector and the shipping industry range from 15 to 30 percent of total cost. According to the World Economic Forum, the removal of barriers due to blockchain could result in more than one trillion dollar of new trade in the next decade. Subsequently, blockchain could be a powerful tool to facilitate MSME's participation in international trade by facilitating access to trade finance, facilitating trade procedures, and reducing trade costs. It could help to lower barriers to entry, making it easier for small companies and producers to participate in international trade. However, these opportunities can only be realized if small firms and producers have the right technical skills and enjoy adequate internet access. Addressing the digital gap, both in terms of access and bandwidth, is therefore of key importance. In addition, like any innovation, blockchain carries with it the risk of disrupting some sectors and categories of workers. Opportunities and benefits may not be equally shared. Moreover, these opportunities, like I said, will only be realized um, if several key challenges are addressed, including technical issues such as scalability, interoperability, and legal issues. Many observ observers 
point to the limited scalability of blockchains due to the predetermined size of blocks and energy consumption issues. While scalability is a serious issue for public blockchains, it is less so for consortium permissioned one, which do not face the same limitations. Consortium permissioned blockchains, which give great potential for international trade, are more easily scalable. The heated controversy surrounding the level of energy consumption of blockchains is above all a permissionless issue. In addition, new algorithms, many of which are moving away from the concept of blocks, are being developed that are quicker and less energy intensive, and that can therefore be more easily scaled up. Another potential long-term technical challenge relates to security issues. Although blockchains are highly resilient compared to traditional databases due to their decentralized and distributed nature and use of cryptographic techniques, they are not completely immune from traditional security challenges and advances in technologies, in particular the rise of quantum computing, Cloud, uh, sorry, gold in the long term represent a threat to blockchain technologies. Post quantum algorithms that will be resistant to quantum computing are being actively researched. One of the key technical challenges facing blockchain is the question of interoperability at the technical level as well as at the level of semantics. Numerous platforms are being developed that use different technical interfaces and algorithms and that do not talk to each other. This digital island problem is the subject of active research within the blockchain community. Technical solutions are emerging, but are still in their infancy for the time being. The semantics of the information exchange are also being actively addressed in order to ensure that the sender, receiver, and anyone consulting understand the same data in the same way. International organizations such as the International Chamber of Commerce, International Organization for Standardization, United Nations Center for Trade Facilitation and Electronic Business, and the World Custom Organization have created working groups to initiate discussions to look into the issue and develop interoperability standards. The wide-scale deployment of blockchain requires a conducive regulatory framework that recognizes the legal validity of blockchain transactions, clarifies applicable law and liabilities, and regulates the way data can be accessed and used. The most critical issue relates to the legal status of blockchain transactions. Legislation that recognizes the validity of e-signatures, e-documents, and e-transactions, in particular blockchain transactions, is crucial. In 2017, the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law adopted the Model Law on Electronic Transferable Records and various governments are working on legislation to recognize blockchain transactions, but much remains to be done. Issues related to applicable jurisdiction and liability, while problematic in the case of permissionless blockchains, often allow for a technical workaround in the context of permissioned blockchains. Another potentially challenging legal issue is the question of data privacy and the right to be forgotten embodied in some legislation. The principles of blockchain and the right to be forgotten seem a priori incompatible. Some observers note, however, that both pursue the same goal of giving individuals more control over their personal data, but through different mechanisms. Finally, two legal issues could act as enablers of blockchain technology. The codification of law, which aims at making laws machine readable in order to facilitate the transposition of contractual obligations into digital contract code, and the development of a global legal identification of companies. Given the transformational impact that the technology could have on global trade, 
understanding its legal implications and striving to develop collective solutions to enable the technology to be deployed while addressing legal concerns is key. The development of a comprehensive ecosystem modeled on the internet governance approach that brings together companies, civil society organizations, software, um, software developers, academics, governments, and intergovernmental organizations in various settings to look into standardization, legal and policy issues is critical to support the wide scale deployment of the technology. Likewise, it is also worth considering whether there will be value in initiating a discussion on the practical and legal implications of blockchain in relevant international organizations such as the WTO to help shed light on the potential benefits of the technology, its limitations, and the challenges that may arise if it is more widely deployed, and to help develop collective solutions to support the use of a technology that has the potential to impact global trade significantly. Blockchain could make international trade smarter, but smart trade requires smart solutions and smart standardizations, which can only be developed through cooperation. If we succeed in creating an ecosystem conducive to the wider development of blockchain, international trade may look radically different in 10 to 15 years. So, the answer to the question earlier in our discussion is yes, blockchain can revolutionize international trade by making use and taking advantage of opportunities. However, one must address the challenges to realize the opportunities. All right, this concludes our discussions about blockchain in international trade. Thank you.